In earlier versions of .NET and these versions before 2.0, if you wanted to do FTP coding such as for uploads and downloads to FTP servers, it wasn't really easy to do. You either had to get third-party tools, and most of them were commercial tools, so you had to pay extra money for them, or if you were really motivated, you had to do some complicated coding. When Microsoft released version 2.0 of .NET, it made coding for FTP a lot easier, along with other um, Internet-type functions. The release of the System.NET library introduced a lot of new classes. In particular, the class FTP Web Request was released to allow you to do easier coding to perform uploads and downloads to an FTP server. This film is going to illustrate how to use the FTP Web Request class. In this film, we are going to develop an application that's going to upload a file to an FTP server. To demonstrate this concept, I'm going to create a Windows application using Visual C Sharp as the back-end code. You can create a Windows application using Visual Basic as the back-end code. You can even create an ASP.NET application. You can even create a console application in Visual Basic or Visual C Sharp. The foundations of the code is still the same. You may have to make a few adjustments depending on the type of application you are doing. But for demonstration purposes, I'm going to keep it using Visual C Sharp. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make some slight adjustments to the defaults in the application. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rename the form and I'm also going to change what shows up as the top text of the form. I don't really want it to say Form 1. So what I'm going to do is change the text property of the form to indicate what this application does. In this case, I'm going to upload files to an FTP server. I'm also going to change the name to keep in standards of the Microsoft standards for the variable names. And then I'm also going to adjust the size. All I'm doing to adjust the size is I'm clicking on the form, making sure the mouse is on one of the little white boxes around the border of the form, and just clicking and dragging to change the size. did at this stage already, it's already done for you, is I wanted to add a little bit of jazz to this form to make it look a little bit nicer. So what I did is I added a picture box and I uploaded an image that was on my PC and up arrow to make it look like I'm uploading. I also added a label for a title and I also changed the properties of that label. I changed the size of the font to make it bold and 18 point. I also changed the color as well to try to match the arrow and I also changed the text as well. Then finally what I did is I added a container of a panel and this is where I'm going to put in the fields where the user has to enter in information in order to upload the file to the FTP server. In this one, this is where I'm actually adding the information. I'm going to add four labels and four text boxes. The labels are going to be indicate or are going to indicate rather what I'm going to look for. I'm going to look for an FTP server name, a user ID, a password, and the file to upload. So the first thing I'm going to do is add my label and change its property. And in particular, I wanted to change what it's supposed to say. Then I'm going to add my text box. Now with this text box, after I add the text box, what I'm going to do is change the name of it because I need to reference it. I don't want to reference it as text box 1. So I'm going to change the variable name to indicate what it is. So in this one, it's my FTP server. So it's TXT FTP server. Now, to say that I'm also going to change the size as well, so all I had to do is click on the box, click on any of the little white, little white dots beside it, and click and drag. So, to save some time, what I'm going to do is you're going to, it's going to go through the demonstration and take its time of adding the different controls, whether it's the label and the text box.
Now that I've added the fields that I needed, the four text boxes for the FTP server, the user ID, the password, and the file to upload, I'm going to add the buttons with the action I want to take. The first button is going to be for the upload. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename it to button upload, and I'm also going to change the text to have it say something that makes more sense. And in this case, I'm going to call it upload to server, because that's what the button is supposed to do. Now, to save myself some time, oh, I'm going to change the size as well, but to save myself some time, I can just copy, paste, and modify. So I'm going to right-click on it and copy. Then I'm going to right-click on the form and paste. Then I'm going to remember after I drag it down is to change the properties. In particular, I'm going to change the button name and the text property. This is going to be my clear screen. So what's going to happen with this is when the user clicks the clear screen, it's going to clear all the fields for me. To improve the user experience, I'm going to give the users another option besides having to know the full name, what to type for the file to upload. So what I'm going to add is I'm going to add the ability for them to click on a button so it'll pop up a window just like they would for any other application to let them select the file that they would like to copy. So what I'm going to do is right beside the field name, I'm going to add another button. And I'm going to rename this as BTN Browse, and then I'm going to just change it to say Browse. Now we're ready to code. The first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to code the actions for clearing the screen, and that is going to be the click action for the button clear. So what we are going to do is when they click on it, it's going to blank out the values in the text boxes, and then it's also going to put the focus on the FTP server field. So as you can see in the demonstration, we are just using the text property and just clearing the value by putting two quotation marks, which is the blank. The field names are txt FTP server, txt user ID, txt password, and txt file. Then finally, we're going to use the focus method on the txt FTP server to put the focus on the, on the txt FTP server field. Now we're testing our code for the clear screen. So all we're doing is we're clicking on the little green triangle that's going to just let us debug and test our code. So as you can see demonstrated, we're just going to enter a whole bunch of stuff in the text. It doesn't matter at this point. Then we're going to click on the clear screen to see what happens. As you noticed in our text, you could see that the password field was exposed. And that's not really good coding standards. So what we're going to do is we're going to change a property of the password field called password car. The password card property says this is the field to display when somebody's typing in that box. This is very handy for the password. So as we'll see demonstrated, so when I type in the password in the password field, it's now going to show asterisks like it does with any other application that you would see for the password. It's more for a little bit of extra protection and better user experience.